Hello and welcome to Under the Radar, a series where I look into anime that have flown under the radar and hope that you might find a new favourite. In this episode I'll be talking about one of the least popular shows I've covered so far, Hyogi Mono. Despite coming out in 2012 and being one of my favourite shows, it went completely unnoticed. In fact, it was so unpopular that even the original fan subgroup dropped it halfway through. But I can guarantee it's one of the most unique and entertaining shows out there. Hyoge Mono is an extremely unique telling of the usual Edo period Japan. Instead of focusing on the samurai or the battles, it focuses on things like the samurai's fashion, the tea ceremonies, and the politics of the time. This is what makes Hyoge Mono stand out from other samurai shows. During this period, people of high importance used tea ceremonies as an almost ritual. An extreme amount of detail and planning would be put into every single little aspect of the tea ceremony. And this is what our story revolves around, watching our main character Sasuke as he works his way up the ranks and embarks on the journey of tea. Instantly, this is a show that impressed me with its unique take on a very diluted genre. I'm a big fan of samurai stuff, but I'll be the first one to say that it's very easy to make a dull, repetitive samurai film or series. These days it takes something like Hyogi Mono to refresh the genre. This series is very character driven. Almost all the focus is on the characters. They do reference a lot of battles and bigger story arcs, but the main focus is on the characters and how they interact. This makes for a fantastically well developed series. It really does feel like an epic, but it's not all serious. There is a great amount of really well done comedy and really well timed light hearted moments. I think this is one of the keys to the success of the series. It would be incredibly hard to make a super serious series that lasts for this long. They need the comedic moments to give the viewer a little break every now and again. It really helps to pace the series. As you can tell, Hyoge Mono is easily one of the most unique tellings of the Edo period Japan out there. The story is told over a very long period of time, and includes a very large amount of characters. This helps cover a lot of story, really getting the viewer invested. It allows time for the story to really progress and for the characters to really develop. Don't get me wrong, having a long story doesn't guarantee a good story, but if done right like in Hyogi Mono, it can work out fantastically. This was one of the reasons I felt as connected as I did come the end of the series. And of course, the characters were all great. There was a massive amount of well-developed characters that came in and out of the story. There were a lot of twists and deaths to keep the cast fresh to the viewer. Not only was there a large amount of characters, but a lot of variety in the types and personalities of characters. This was all helped by the extra focus the anime put into highlighting things like body language and facial expressions. Because normally faces in anime can be quite bland, Hyogi Mono's glorious use of facial expressions to show emotions was so nice to watch. This paired with the top-notch voice acting only added to the enjoyment of the characters. I really did enjoy our main character Sasuke. He wasn't perfect, in fact he spent a lot of the series failing at what he was trying to do. He also wasn't morally perfect. He didn't always do the right thing just because he was the main character. The show was not afraid to let Sasuke do something wrong or make a mistake. This only ended up strengthening the bond between me and the character. This and his kooky personality made him one of my favourite characters of all time. Hyogi Mono's choice to create a more character driven series using a traditional story driven genre paid off brilliantly. Hyogi Mono is all about the aesthetics, so it's only natural that the show would use that on itself. The designs of Hyogi Mono were really interesting. Mainly, it's a very simple style used to design very simple things, but this is on purpose. Because the usual stuff looks so ordinary, when they introduce something new like a tea bowl or an item of clothing, it stands out even more. There were so many funky designs used during the show. It really did look fantastic and really encapsulated what the show was about. To go from looking at the beauty in the simplest of tea bowls to the extravagance of the Emperor's new outfit, it was just fantastic. The soundtrack is the same. It's an awesome mix of classic Japanese sounding music to more modern tracks, sometimes sounding quite electronic. This just backs up the visual style of Hyogi Mono, adding a bit of spice here and there. Although Hyogi Mono might be a bit slow, it's a fantastic series. Its unique nature and really well written characters make such a worthwhile experience. There's something for everyone in the show. There's a lot of comedy, a lot of politics, a lot of philosophy, a lot of character interactions. I really would recommend this to anybody. And if you want to see what other shows have flown under the radar, you can check them out by clicking on any of them on the screen now. And if you enjoyed this video, please do consider clicking the like button and sharing it around. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys next time.